Okay, let me start with saying that I trust all scientists are highly intelligent and they are, they are pretty well intentioned. So I'm not going to say anything about people being not well intentioned. However, I am a statistician, so I had to follow what American Statistical Association said. It said, in God we trust, all others bring data. And so we'll talk about sometimes the data can be misleading. And so I'm going to talk about this realized population change, the tale of two methods. We have been listening to this all, all of this stuff that the populations are going down and the lambda method is one of the popular ones that we have been looking at. So I'm just going to set up the, the stage from notation perspective and then talk about the final result because I have very few minutes. So if NT is the population size at, at time T, then the population growth in one year is given by the ratio of NT plus one divided by NT and that is what we call lambda. And if lambda is bigger than one, the population has gone up. If lambda is smaller than one, it has gone down. Pretty simple stuff. And if we have T years instead of one year, the realized population change is basically the difference, the ratio of n cap t, so population size at time t and population size at time 1, which we can write as a product of these lambdas that the growth at each of those years. So we can either calculate the realized population change by knowing the population at time t and population at time 1 or by calculating the growth rate in each of the intervening years. So those are the two basic methods that we have. So using mark capture, recapture, or something like that, you can calculate the population abundance, take the ratio, or you can calculate the, um, the growth rate. And here is where the real crux comes in. So Hatter and Burgerd, in a beautiful paper, they showed that this lambda can be calculated without estimating the populations, per se. All you need to know is their survival rate for that year and the recruitment rate. If those are estimable, then we can, uh, we can know how the population is growing, and once we know lambda, we can talk about the realized population growth. Okay, so here is what happens. So I call it Candler's ruin or irrational exuberance. And these, uh, the lambda hat is an estimate, and so it could be biased. Similarly, the survival probability could be biased, or the recruitment could be biased. So how can we have survival probability to be biased? Well, if the age distribution in the collared animals is different than the age distribution in the population, then you can get into trouble. If you have censoring, you, when you lose an animal and you don't know the animal's fate, was it dead or we just lost it, we don't know. That is called censoring. And if that is the case, then you have to use something called Kaplan-Meier estimator to calculate the survival. And that can be negatively biased as well, it is known to be. Similarly, the recruitment rate can be biased. And I have been told that you have to judge whether something is a calf or a cow. And that, at age one, it's pretty difficult to do. That's what I have been told. And so there could be a misclassification of a calf as a cow. There could be unrecognized gender, so we don't know which way it goes, and so on. So all of you are biologists, you can figure out how many different ways this could be biased. My goal is to say, if S and R are biased, lambda is biased, what effect does it have? So I'm going to show you just one picture. I introduced just 2% bias every year uh, the lambda hat has a 2% bias, which is pretty small. And those things can occur if you have one calf being misclassified as a cow out of 15 or 10, 10 calves. So depending on how many calves and how many cows you have and how many unrecognized genders are there. So you can adjust those things to see how much bias you may have in lambda. If lambda is well estimated, if it is unbiased, 
So here, the truth is that the population is not changing. Lambda is actually one. And you can see that if it is unbiased, everything works just fine. Look at the 2% bias. If you continue like that, after 16 years, which is the difference between 1993 to 2009, the bias in lambda turns out to be 28%. So the truth is one, and you might say it is substantially lower than what the truth is. Even the worst thing happens, that with 4%, of course, you are going to go further down, 6% bias, you are going to have much, much worse situation. So this is what we call gambler's ruin. So in the casino, if the casino has a slightly higher chance on than winning, uh, winning than you do, you are guaranteed to go to zero. You are, you are going to be ruined, and that is what is happening. So slight bias in that lambda is going to ruin the chances of quote-unquote survival. The second thing that happens, which is why I call it irrational exuberance, it, this bias not only affects the trend that you are seeing in the population, which is a spurious trend, and it comes purely because of these biases. The second thing that happens is that the confidence intervals that you get also become shorter than what they should be. So you are highly confident about being wrong. <laughs> and so your statements are not only that you are wrong, but you are highly confident in making those statements. So it can be a dangerous thing. So these basing all our inferences on these lambdas could be dangerous, unless we know it is unbiased and everything is hunky-dory. And I cannot say if they are unbiased or not, they need to be proven. That's what I mean by, I don't, in God I trust, but not in, I, everybody else brings data. So moral of the story, I just want to recap. So genetics-based MCR estimates, the mark capture recapture estimates, at least we found they are fairly accurate. And so estimate, estimated realized population change based on those capture recapture estimates are going to be reasonably accurate. And moreover, it turns out that the bias accumulation in lambda, that does not happen if you estimate the realized population change based on the population estimates instead of the survival and recruitment. So it is better to do it in terms of population estimates rather than survival and recruitment. The vital rates based estimators are possibly biased and as I have shown, that bias can accumulate a lot over years and moreover your standard errors or the confidence intervals are also spuriously short. Hedder and Berger actually knew this, I suspect, because they said that their estimator should be calibrated every few years. They did not say just use my lambda and do the estimates. They said we should do it uh, we should recalibrate it using the real population estimates that we have. And I think this is a very sound suggestion. I understand that estimating the population is expensive, maybe. May maybe difficult, maybe it is not going to be, I don't know. But And there are advantages in getting survival, recruitment, and other information. So I'm not going to say that one method is better than the other. I would say, let's try to combine those so that the bias in the realized population change and our inferences are much better uh, supported by the data, realistically supported. And so, I'm again, as I said, that I the SCAD-based sampling provides population estimates. It also provides, as Sam has shown, all other things about the physiology and um, other relevant things that we need, not just for where the caribou are, but it also says what their recruitment is in terms of reproduction and so on. So there are advantages and disadvantages in both methods. However, just relying on lambda and making these humongous decisions, which at least I find them difficult, I'm not willing to pay just $75 for making such a mistake. So, I don't know exactly how much I would pay in case things will ha go wrong with removing the wolves. And so in a way, I think we are like being in a whiteout. If I'm in a white, I'm a mountaineer. I like to do mountaineering. So I know if I'm caught in a whiteout, what do I do? I don't say, oh my God, I'm in trouble. 
and I don't run around, I try to find out what the information is, otherwise you might go over a cliff. And so, given that our population estimates are so much higher, given that these mark capture recapture estimates are not showing as drastic a decline as the lambda does, maybe we should step back and see what's going on. Can we reconcile the two things or something is going wrong or what? So instead of making the decision of removing an important predator and affecting the whole ecosystem, maybe we should step back and make the decisions with a cooler head.